We read in verse 16 to 18 that the king gave orders reluctantly and Daniel was brought and cast into the lion's den. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, well, your God whom you constantly serve will himself deliver you. He said that but he didn't really believe it because it says here in verse 18 he couldn't sleep. There are some people who say a lot of big things but they, when they can't sleep at night you know that they don't, don't really have much faith. Oh yeah, your God will deliver you. But if he really believed that, he just slept peacefully. The only one who slept peacefully that night was Daniel. He was all right. He, he knew that his God would take care of him in the lion's den. And a stone was brought just like at the tomb of Jesus after his death, you know. The Pharisees came to Pilate and said, you better seal that tomb because something will happen. So it says here, the king sealed it. They brought a stone and covered up the den and sealed it. And uh, so that nothing could be changed, the king went off to his palace and he spent the night fasting. No entertainment was brought to him and his sleep fled from him. Well, he loved Daniel all right, but he didn't have much faith. And we read here, Then the king arose with the dawn, at the break of day, and went in haste to the lion's den. And when he came near the den to Daniel, he cried out with a troubled voice. He's still not sure whether Daniel is dead or alive. And he said to Daniel, Daniel, sir, of the living God, let me, are you still alive? Has your God, whom you constantly serve, been able? Well, he just said in verse 16 that he was able to deliver him. But he's like a lot of believers today. Has he done it? <laughs> and when you hear he's done it, oh, then he must be really alive, this God. Yeah. Well, we're not followers of Darius. We are followers of Daniel. Daniel speak to the king, uh, spoke to the king, O king, live forever. May God, my God, send his angel and shut the lion's mouth. Now, we've been seeing in the book of Daniel the sovereignty of God. We've seen his sovereignty over governments, over forces of nature, over physical health in the bodies of those young people. And now we see his sovereignty over animals and over the entire animal kingdom. Not only hungry lions, but like it says in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, over serpents and scorpions and all the evil things that crawl around the earth and the mad dogs and uh, everything else, every animal or creature that you're ever afraid of. Everything, lizards and rats and everything. He's sovereign over it all. It's a wonderful book, the book of Daniel, the sovereignty of God over everything. You, you name it and it's in the book of Daniel, God's sovereign over it. Everything that can bring fear to our hearts. My health, read chapter 1. Power, forces of nature, wind of fire, read chapter 3. Animals, read chapter 6. Governments, rulers, read chapter 2, chapter 4, chapter 5. It's all there. And he shut the lion's mouths and they haven't harmed me. Inasmuch as I was found innocent. And also toward you, O king, I have committed no crime. You see, a, a good conscience is the best pillow to sleep on. Did you know that? And Daniel had a good pillow. He may have had one of the lions as a pillow as well, but, <laughs> but, but he also had a good conscience to sleep that night and that's the thing that gives us a peaceful sleep at night well maybe I lost my job maybe I lost something else but at least I got a good conscience praise God brother that's worth everything in the world a good conscience and he had a good conscience he says I'm innocent never done anything wrong the king was very pleased gave orders for Daniel to be taken up out of the den and so Daniel was brought out and no hurt was found on him. They examined him. Think of the stupidity of these people. They thought the lions must have scratched him somewhere or the other. To see no injury on him. And here's the reason. It was not automatic. That's the point I want to emphasize. It was not automatic. It was by faith. He trusted in his God. Now I want you to turn to Hebrews chapter 11. And read this there. Hebrews 11:33 it says that by faith you know Hebrews 11 is full of faith and it says here 
Hebrews 11.33 By faith there are certain people who conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, and by faith shut the mouths of lions. By faith the mouth of lions was shut. We don't see that in Daniel, but it is explained in Hebrews 11.33 that the angel shut the lion's mouth. But it was Daniel's faith that kept that mouth, lion's mouth shut. Here is an example given us in Hebrews 11. That Daniel is an example for us to follow. And Hebrews 12.1 says, We have such a great company of witnesses, all the ones listed in Hebrews 11 of which Daniel is one, who shut the mouth of a lion by faith. And if we have faith, the mighty sovereignty of God will work on our behalf against forces of nature, against physical sickness, against animal, the animal kingdom, against Nebuchadnezzars and rulers and big shots and everything to fulfill God's purpose for our life. See what it says in 2 Timothy 4. What Paul says, 2 Timothy 4. He says in verse 16 of 2 Timothy 4, At my first defense, no one supported me. Here was Paul alone, just like Daniel. Everyone deserted me. May it not be counted against them. And you can find yourself in situations like Paul where everybody deserts you and you are standing alone for God somewhere. But you won't be alone, brother, sister. Verse 17, the Lord stood with me. Blessed are those who can say that. If you've got a good conscience. And faith, faith and a good conscience. He said that earlier in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 verse 19. Faith and a good conscience. If you have that, God will stand with you. 2 Timothy 4.17 And strengthen me so that the Gentiles might hear my proclamation. In the last part of verse 17, I was delivered out of the lion's mouth. They were going to throw me into the Roman amphitheater to the lions, but I escaped it. See, he, got a, he escaped from a lion's den too. That didn't mean Paul lived forever. He says in verse 8, the time of my departure is at hand, verse 6 to 8. I'm already, my time has come, verse 6. He was beheaded. No, we don't live forever. God has his time and when our days are fulfilled, he removes us. And Paul did not have a natural death, he died as a martyr. But my point is, God's plan was not for him to die in the amphitheater, eaten up by lions. His plan was for him to be beheaded. And so even Nero could not throw Paul to the lions. That applies even today. No one can do anything to us outside of the will of God if we have faith. Then we read further in Daniel 6. Then the king gave orders and brought those men who had maliciously accused Daniel and threw them with their children and their wives to the lion's den. See, this is real heathenism. Let me get my revenge on these fellows who put me into a difficult situation and accused Daniel. And I'm sure Daniel never approved of that act of throwing his accusers and their innocent wives and children into the lion's den. It says the lion overpowered them and crushed all their bones. And so we see God standing with this tremendous man, man of God in his hour of testing. And just like the angel of the Lord stood with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the fire and Daniel had missed that experience, God gave him an experience in the lion's den where the same angel of the Lord came and sat with Daniel so that Daniel could sleep peacefully. We read that in the New Testament too in Acts 12 verse 6 when Peter was imprisoned. The day before he was to be beheaded, it says that night Peter slept. Blessed are those who can sleep when you know you're going to be beheaded tomorrow morning. That shows you got faith and it shows you got a good conscience. And then Darius the king wrote to all the people and nations, verse 25 of Daniel 6, May your peace abound, I make a decree that in all the dominion of my kingdom men are to fear and tremble. The heathen fear and tremble. Christians love and serve. Darius didn't believe in loving and serving God. He had only, still had only that heathen concept. This is a powerful God. 
We better fear and tremble before him. He's the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. His dominion will be forever. He delivers and rescues and performs signs and wonders. Well, whatever his lacks may be, I'll tell you one thing in which Darius had more faith than many Christians. Verse 27. He says, God can deliver, God can rescue, and God can perform signs and wonders. I wonder how many Christians believe that today. That God can deliver, God can rescue, and God can perform signs and wonders in heaven and earth. He has delivered even Daniel from the power of the lions. There is a difference, of course, between the testimony of a heathen and the testimony of a Christian. A Christian doesn't believe only if God delivers. A Christian says like Job, Job 13 verse 15, Even if God slays me, I will trust in him. It's not a question of whether God delivers me from the lions or doesn't deliver me. He is still God. And may our faith be like that. Whether God delivers me or doesn't, he's just the same. I love him just as much and I'll serve him just as much. One thing I know, he will perfect my path in his perfect will. No Nebuchadnezzar, no Cyrus, no Darius, no jealous commissioners can ever frustrate God's plan for my life. If his plan is deliverance, he'll deliver me. If my time is up, he'll fulfill that. This is the God we serve. So Daniel enjoyed success in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And may God help us to follow in his footsteps.